Like many others, my family were forced to stay at home with no work for three years. We had no money and bombs were falling all around us. I had five brothers and six sisters, but if you have a large family, you're sure to lose a lot of them. I sold machinery and everything I could. I went to Turkey with my family. We stayed in my brother-in-law's small flat. I made a decision to risk my life crossing the Mediterranean to try and establish a life for my family in Europe. I paid a smuggler £800 for a place on a plastic boat made for 20 people. 55 refugees were crammed in, including women and children, but I couldn't take the risk. I thought we would surely die. Travelling through Europe, my life was endless walking, with just my phone, GPS, for guidance. On my first attempt to cross into Macedonia from Greece, I walked 30 miles until my feet bled. Nobody helped us. We lost all our money. We were tired, but we continued on our way. Like thousands of hours, I ended up stranded at Cali. I stayed in the tent for four and a half months. Sadly, I knew many who lost their lives attempting to cross into the UK. Using my carpentry skills, I helped build a mosque and a library there. They have now been demolished. Eventually, a man helped hide me in a van crossing the channel where I was crammed for 18 hours without food, water or a bathroom. But I knew it was my last chance. I know if I lost it, I couldn't try again. In my home country, I had everything. I had a house, car, a workshop and a farm. We had a very nice life. It's not our dream to come here. People think we are here to take everything, but I came here to work and make a future for myself. I have the power and skills. I just want to focus on getting a job because I know the war in Syria won't be over for a long time. Since moving to Northern Ireland, I have been learning English at my college, helping with cooking, gardening and fixing bikes at the centre I'm housed in. Everyone watches the news and thinks Syrians are dangerous people. If I liked danger, I would have stayed a fault and not have come here. I sometimes hear people talking about me, saying ISIS when I talk Arabic. I'm a Syrian. I'm very proud. I'm not going to change it. It's a problem for them, not for me. I am worried that these comments could affect my children though. I had a terrible time travelling to try to find a good future for my boys. I want to build a life in Northern Ireland. I was forced by the war to live a grinding existence with my family in exile. Without a work permit in the country I fled to, I struggled through day shifts for low wages. As the days passed, I was getting more and more scared. One day, a motorcycle gang tried to kidnap me on the street. The war that drove my family away was in its fourth year. The people who once welcomed us became weary of us. Despite all this, I still had hope because I was in love with another refugee called Bassem. He promised to take me to Europe for safety, where we would marry and build a new life. I knew the risks. It was August 2014. 2,000 migrants and refugees had already died crossing the Mediterranean that year. I didn't know how to swim, but for the second time in my life, I felt like I had no choice but to flee. So Bassem paid his life savings to smugglers, $2,500 each, to get us onto an old fishing boat. It was so packed with people that my knees were bent to my chest. After two days at sea, I started to get worried. And on the third day, I told Bassem, we will never reach the shore. We will all sink. On day four, another boat approached the vessel. It was rusty. When we were ordered to get on, we refused. The smugglers left angrily. And they returned. They rammed a hole in the side of the hull. Let the fish eat your flesh, they shouted and then laughed. Within minutes, the boat capsized and sank, with 300 people trapped below deck. The sea went black. I heard people screaming and water crashing. 
I felt like I was going to drown. I watched her propeller cut a child to pieces. Miraculously, Bissem found a water ring. He held my hand and treaded water. There were corpses everywhere. The 100 survivors came together in small groups and we prayed for Rusky. Well, this day turned to night and today again. Many lost hope. I watched as men take off their life vests and drowned. A Palestinian approached me with his nine month old granddaughter. Please take her, he said. I am very tired. Then he gave up and let the sea take his life. Soon after, Bassem had also reached his limit. His last words were, Sorry, my love, please forgive me. He joined before my eyes. Later that day, a mother struggled towards me with her daughter, Massa. Save her, she said, I will not survive. I could not swim. I had just watched my fiancé drown, and now I was in charge of two young lives. They were crying, agitated, hungry, and thirsty. So I told them stories and played with them. Another day passed, and then another. On the fourth day at sea, I saw a merchant boat. For two hours, I shouted. They spotted me with searchlights in the dark and extended a rope. Astonished to find me, a young woman clutching two babies. Malik died in the boat's clinic, but I pulled through. We are a group of young people who were asked by Good Relations and PCSP to take part in a project along with Bangor Alternatives and YMCA North Down looking at hate crime. We focused around people who have fled their country to come and live here in Northern Ireland. We took part in group discussions and workshops that challenged us around our perceptions and stereotypes. We heard stories from people who went through incredible experiences just to keep themselves and their families safe. As a group of young people, we had the opportunity to interview the Chief Inspector of the PSNI from our area of Ards in North Down. We heard about what hate crime actually is, examples of it taking place in our community, and what we can do to stop it. We hope that this film and workshops around it will help make others understand why people leave their countries, what they have been through, and most importantly, that they are human beings and people, just like all of us. We want all migrants and refugees to be made welcome here in our communities. We support the No Hate Here campaign.